Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on your mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of your cell. They generate a lot of the energy uh, in your body, and there's three main causes when we look at mitochondrial issues of underlying energy deficits. So first off, part of you know how your body generates energy is through this currency called ADP. And essentially your body runs through the citric acid cycle and electron transport chain, spits off hydrogens, and these hydrogens take ADP and they convert it to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And this is kind of the currency of how your body creates energy. So really simply, we have the mitochondria at the top, we then have the triangle here below where we have your thyroid and your adrenals at the bottom. Now a lot of my patients that I see in my clinic, there's an underlying adrenal and sometimes a thyroid or sometimes a thyroid and no adrenal. So we could see either both adrenal and thyroid, they could be primary adrenal or primary thyroid like a Hashimoto's case with their adrenal still being strong. On top of that, we can also see some people, when we run very, various organic acid testing, we'll see their mitochondria is also off as well. And this is when we hit the trifecta, when we see an adrenal dysfunction, adrenal fatigue, along with a thyroid imbalance, whether it's autoimmune, whether it's a conversion issue, a nutrient issue, etc., and a mitochondrial issue. And these are the three ways in which your body creates energy. Now, underlining some of those three ways here, I'm going to overlay something. We have other attributes that affect it. So we have the gut, we also have the liver, and we have the brain over here. So the brain, the liver, and the gut, these all interplay. These all interplay with each other. So a gut issue can easily cause an adrenal issue. An adrenal issue can easily cause a brain issue. Brain can easily affect the mitochondria, and mitochondria can easily affect the liver and vice versa. So if we have toxicity issues, that causes our body to need extra nutrients, extra sulfur amino acids, extra minerals, and that takes away from the mitochondria because the mitochondria needs various nutrients as well. The mitochondria needs B vitamins. It needs alpha lipoic acid. It needs carnitine. These are all the nutrients our mitochondria needs to bring it down and to convert it into something known as acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is the currency in which starts this whole citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. Those terms are interchangeable. Uh, Dr. Krebs invented or discovered the citric acid cycle, so they name it after, after him kind of confusing, but you get the gist. So we have gut connecting to adrenals, adrenals connecting to brain, brain to mitochondria, mitochondria to liver, liver to thyroid, and then obviously thyroid to gut. So you can see here my little star and then the outside hexagon there. These are how the body is connected. So the underlying mitochondria, adrenals, and thyroid for energy, and then the underneath brain, gut, and liver and how everything connects. I hope that makes sense because you can have a fatigue issue that may not be thyroid, may not be adrenal related as a primary issue and maybe a primary mitochondria. When we support the mitochondria more, that may be the biggest uh, thing that gets the energy over the hump. So on that note, let's dig in to the Krebs cycle. So you can see acetyl-CoA, all of these come down from our macronutrients, fats, proteins, and carbs. This is why a healthy, anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense, low-toxin diet is important, so we have the precursor here ready to go. And you can see this Krebs cycle cranks around two times. And what happens when it cranks around, it's using various amino acids here, glutamine, histamine, or histidine, arginine, proline, glycine, leucine, isoleucine, valine, methionine, tyrosine, phenylalanine, uh, aspirate, um, cysteine, all of these nutrients are needed. Minerals as well, such as iron, B vitamins, manganese, um, magnesium, uh, alpha lipoic acid, these are all important nutrients. So the prime nutrients we're seeing are protein, B vitamins, ALA, and key minerals such as B12 and iron. Iron's important, so if we have an anemia going on here, like an iron-based anemia or a B12 anemia, you can see how those nutrients are intimately involved in running the Krebs cycle and generating energy. So what happens here is basically we have these 
electron, these oxidizers, if you will, NAD and FADH, they are missing an electron, so to speak, so they can pull in this hydrogen molecule. So over here, what you're gonna see is, NAD pulls out a hydrogen here, it pulls out one down here, it pulls out one down here, and it pulls out one down here. The FAD pulls a hydrogen out here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. And it cranks around twice. So in the end, we get eight different hydrogen molecules that can, can go enter into the electron transport chain. So briefly, all of these different compounds, the NADH and the FADH, the whole reason our bodies, we're collecting these hydrogens for one main reason. We're collecting them so we can generate ATP. So I'm gonna draw it out for you real quick. We have isocitrate, we create an NADH here. We create an NADH here. Okay, we create an NADH here. And we create a FADH2. So all, this runs two times. So this runs around two times and it basically what it creates for us, it grabs eight hydrogens, okay? These eight hydrogens, they run through the electron transport chain, they run through the Krebs cycle and they help take ADP and turn it into ATP. And this is the cellular energy in which we go off of. And our body's also able to take that ATP and create energy by also making CoQ10 from it. So one more time, let's recap. We have our citric acid cycle. It cranks around by creating acetyl-CoA from all of our macronutrients, fats, proteins, carbs. We have B vitamins, carnitine, which is made from methionine and lysine, something that vegetarians lack. We have ALA, B vitamins. These nutrients crank around. You can see we need cysteine and iron. We need B3, magnesium, our B vitamins. Uh, all of our amino acids are boxed on the outside here, and these are important to running that Krebs cycle. That Krebs cycle runs around two times. It collects eight hydrogen molecules each time it runs. Those eight hydrogens then go into the electron transport chain as well, and that creates more energy. We're not going into the electron transport chain. Just know that inside our mitochondria, this is right here, this is how our mitochondria looks. It's like a little bean. And what happens over here, we have the citric acid cycle. And then on the other side, we have our electron transport chain. And what happens through this, we eventually develop about 32 net ATP. And you can see this is the currency in which our body creates energy off of. So we're creating citric acid cycle is in here, the electron transport chain is all in here, and then we generate 32 units of ATP. This is energy. So if you're tired, if you're fatigued, I like to run an organic acid test on my patients to get a window inside the mitochondria. We also look at the adrenal and thyroid. So adrenal, thyroid, mitochondria, and the underlying deeper issues that can affect that are gonna be liver, gut, and brain, brain being neurotransmitters. So you can see if we don't have enough quality protein in our diet, we won't be able to make carnitine. We won't be able to put enough aminos into the Krebs cycle to run it like it does. And if we're eating junk sugar, we're gonna burn through up magnesium. We're gonna burn up a lot of our B vitamins and ALA because those get burnt up when we take in too much refined sugar. And if we're getting exposed to too much toxins, we're gonna use a lot of our sulfur amino acids that would normally run here We'll use that to run our phase one and phase two cytochrome P450 oxidase pathways. Those get run when we're being exposed to toxins. So we really wanna to decrease toxicity, eat organic foods, avoid the refined sugar, eat a blood sugar stabilizing diet, healthy proteins, the right carbohydrates and healthy fats at each meal. And again, if you're having digestion issues, we may wanna talk about doing some free form aminos and adding in extra mitochondrial nutrients and looking deeper under the hood at the gut, at the adrenals and at the thyroid. So if you're having fatigue issue and you feel like your mitochondria aren't working properly, click on screen, click below and subscribe and get more information. I can 
If you reach out to me, I should be able to help run some of the tests we need to get a, a window into how your mitochondria, thyroid, and your adrenals are functioning and get to the root cause. Thanks, this is Dr. J signing off. Have a great weekend.